Hello and welcome back to my channel. Let's understand our planet. So let's continue with our crystallography series. This is the second part which will cover the introduction to mineralogy. Here we'll talk about minerals and this study which is nothing but mineralogy. So yeah, minerals are everywhere. We use them in almost everything it is seen in front of us, including our mobiles, computers, medicines, and even in water. So let us first define a mineral. A mineral is a body produced by the process of inorganic nature having a definite chemical composition and if formed under favorable conditions, a certain characteristic molecular structure which is exhibited in its crystalline form and other physical properties. Uh, so I'll explain this definition in brief. So what the definition is saying, a mineral is a body produced by the process of inorganic nature having a definite chemical composition and is formed under several conditions. Okay. So mineral is definitely having a definite chemical composition. Okay. And it is produced by process of inorganic nature. So processes like crystallization. Okay. Crystallization. Okay, we have crystallization, then we have evaporation, evaporation, okay, and we have nucleation, okay, these are all the processes, like they are inorganic process, processes by which minerals are Form. These are some of the examples. Okay, when we talk about inorganic, why inorganic? Because most of the inorganic substances that we have, like suppose we have the compounds, like suppose we have CuSO4. Okay, CuSO4. Okay, it's, it's an inorganic compound. So how the CuSO4 will crystallize? It will crystallize by first evaporation will take place. Okay, evaporation of water. Then we have nucleation. Okay, and after nucleation, we will finally have crystallization. Okay, so this is series. So first evaporation, then we have nucleation. Okay, and then lastly we have crystallization. Okay, so this is a general process of forming uh, minerals. I mean, uh, crystalline compounds from the solutions. Okay, this process also take place in minerals like. Um, Suppose we have gypsum, okay, calcium sulfate. Okay, calcium sulfate is nothing but a gypsum mineral. Okay, I mean, gypsum mineral is nothing but calcium sulfate. So, what happens? Gypsum is usually dissolved in sea water. Okay, in, when the sea water evaporates uh, during uh, very high temperature eras, okay, when it evaporates, it will ha also have minerals like. NaCl, okay, halite, uh, even uh, KCl, sylvite, and other, uh, uh, I also have magnesium sulfate, ipsomite, okay, uh, these are all chemical compounds which are present in the sea water, they'll first evaporate, okay. Uh, when it is evaporating, nucleation of molecules will take place. Okay, molecules will gather and nucleation take place, and after nucleation, we will have final crystallization of minerals. So, uh, this is one of the processes that uh, takes place for formation of minerals. And we also have uh, direct crystallization from molten magma, okay, uh, etc. Uh, et like, uh, I'm not talk more on this. I'll explain it in uh, later videos. Okay, so uh, it is produced by the process of inorganic nature having a definite chemical composition. Okay, so each mineral is having a definite chemical composition. Suppose if we talk about gypsum, so gypsum we have calcium sulfate, and uh, we talk about halide, halide is NaCl, we talk about sylvite, it's sylvite is KCl, and if we talk about this example, this is tourmaline. Okay, so tourmaline's formula is very complicated, okay, but it is an aluminium borosilicate mineral. Okay. Aluminium 
borosilicate mineral it okay so this is al normally this is borosilicate mineral aluminum borosilicate mineral okay so every mineral is having a definite conformation and if formed under favorable conditions a certain characteristic molecular structure which is exhibited in its crystalline form and other physical properties okay so we are talking about favorable conditions okay we are talking about favorable conditions so what are favorable conditions so favorable conditions are conditions where uh, when a crystallizing solution or magma is having a definite temperature and pressure conditions okay definite temperature and pressure of this name of this So, uh, when the solution is having a definite temperature and pressure conditions, okay, in those conditions, certain minerals are stable. Okay, when they are stable in certain conditions, they undergo molecular arrangement. Killer. arrangement okay so when they go uh, molecular arrangement they have a definite crystal form is developed okay so under molecular arrangement we have formation of a definite crystal in crystal form is produced okay so which is exhibited by its morphology okay so we have this uh mineral which is an ortonite okay it's an radioactive mineral so you can see it is having a perfect geometrical shape so why this mineral is having perfect geometrical shape because it was formed under favorable conditions and when it was formed under favorable conditions it had its crystalline form it was developed okay so such that it is exhibited by its molecular i mean morphological form similarly we have this tourmaline crystal we have this tourmaline prismatic crystal so this is also the result of favorable conditions which led to the development of perfect crystalline forms okay and also other physical properties so when a crystal form is perfectly developed it indirectly i mean it directly affects the symmetry which automatically gives us the physical properties okay i'll explain this in coming slides okay so let's move towards some examples Some minerals are varied in nature, and each species is unique in terms of composition, molecular arrangement, and morphological features. So I have taken this three examples, three common basic examples. So the first one is rhodochrosite. So this is a manganese carbonate mineral, which is usually found as prismatic uh, pyramidal crystals. So these are pyramidal terminations. Okay. and the next one which you can see on this black shiny mineral is nothing but uraninite this is a uranium oxide mineral which is highly radioactive lastly we have this blue cubic fluorite so calcium fluoride mineral commonly found as cubes and octahedrons okay this is a halide mineral it's an oxide mineral and this is a carbonate so the c grouping of minerals in later slides these are the general minerals okay now let's see some of the real mineral specimens so i have here is stilbite so uh, this stilbite is peach colored it's an aluminum silicate mineral which actually belongs to the zeolite group okay it belongs to the zeolite 
group steel bed and then we have black tourmaline so as i explained earlier tourmaline is an aluminum borosilicate mineral okay, which commonly is found in pegmatites that one was uh, purple tourmaline this is black tourmaline this is the most common form of tourmaline and as you can see we have some mica over here must call it then we have quartz most of people know what is quartz so quartz is an sio2 so silicate mineral most common silicate mineral okay and it's also the most abundant mineral found in earth's crust okay it's only found in crust it's not found in mantle okay and then we have gypsum i told you gypsum is calcium sulfate so this is also an evaporite mineral okay this was formed when the sea was evaporated and we got this slab of gypsum because it is not having perfect crystals and this is fluoride calcium fluoride you can see the cubic shapes this is a distinctive morphological feature of fluoride then we have amethyst nice amethyst which is nothing but a variety of quartz okay so only the color difference because of some manganese inclusions this color is only due to some inclusions okay so it's not a different mineral species but it's a variety of quartz and this is barite barite is barium sulfate this also formed under evaporite conditions but in deserts and this is a phosphatic mineral actually this is not considered to be a valid mineral species but still many people call it a mineral and this is kind of aluminum silicate commonly a metamorphic mineral found in metamorphic sites cyst and gneiss and finally we have pyrite okay, this is metallic iron sulfate mineral popular for its cubes and octahedron dodecahedron okay. so let's recap so we have we saw steel bait then gypsum then fluorite barite phosphatic nodule amethyst pyrite kyanite quartz and lastly black tourmaline okay so this is how the world of minerals is diverse but interesting to learn okay so moving forward so when we have want to study about minerals we approach what we call as mineralogy so mineralogy is a systematic study of minerals that extensively covers its description okay the physical description of the minerals how they look what properties they have the morphology and everything and the crystallography okay which is nothing but the study of its molecular arrangement then we have physical properties uh physical properties are nothing but the properties is exhibited by its physical form for example we have luster we have streak we have color like that okay and we have chemical properties okay also covers chemical properties and optical properties and lastly the environmental features the environmental features describe the conditions and uh, the environment where the mineral was formed and how it was formed okay and I, to be specific it is about the origin occurrence okay so mineralogy is a field of science which includes chemistry thermodynamics physics and geology so mineralogy is applied of all these things when you apply all these things all these science fields of science you get what we call as mineralogy okay so let's talk about the physical chemical properties of minerals or in other words the properties that essentially constitute a mineral okay so the first and most important property is that it is a naturally occurring substance man made substances do not count as minerals according to definition okay the minerals are naturally occurring substances then we have a mineral is an homogeneous substance even when minutely examined by a microscope so um suppose we have a mineral okay 
I will take this example of fluoride. So I have a cube of fluoride. Okay. This is a cube of fluoride. Okay. So I can see this cube of fluoride in my hand specimen or externally. So I want to examine this under a microscope. So what I will do? I will take a thin section. Okay, I'll just cut it here using thin section device. Okay, I'll take a thin section and on my slide, glass slide, I'll take a glass slide. I'll keep this section here. So when I'm going to examine this, okay, I can see that the uh, properties, the physical properties of flow, right, such as the color. Uh, okay, physical properties like color, cleavage, and uh, then we have uh, the shape. these properties okay these are very very similar to what we can see in our hand specimen okay we also have optical properties okay so there are some optical properties like uh, transparency transparency and then now uh, we have uh, Refractive index, pleochroism. I'll explain these properties step by step. Okay, pleochroism. Okay, so these properties are also same under a microscope and when in a hand specimen. So we can say that is an homogeneous substance it exhibits all the properties when even when they are examined minutely under a microscope okay so this is what it defines uh, mineral so minerals are homogeneous substances so moving forward we have it has a definite com chemical composition capable of being expressed by a molecular formula so this is the main property, a very, very important property that defines a mineral. Because uh, minerals are naturally occurring chemical compounds, it should definitely have a fixed molecular formula. Like for example, uh, uh, we have kyanate. Okay, uh, we already saw what is a kyanate. So kyanate is an aluminum silicate mineral. It is having molecular formula of Al. SI two O five. Okay, so can it be in this molecular formula of Al SI two O five? Suppose uh, when we do some chemical analysis and we get that uh, this is a compound which is having Al one atom of aluminium, two atoms of silicon, and five atoms of oxygen. We can say that this is can it. Okay, but there are some exceptions. Okay. We know that chemistry is having always chemistry is having exceptions, exceptions, exceptions. So here also we have a great exception where minerals have variable formulas. Okay. Uh, suppose for example, I will take adamite. Okay. Adamite is a zinc arsenide mineral. Adamite. Okay. So this is a zinc arsenide mineral with which is having a general molecular formula of Zn, Zn2 I mean, Zn2, As, ASO4 bracket OH. Okay. So this is the general chemical formula of atom Zn2. This is 2 actually. Zn2 ASO4 OH. But what happens many times when this mineral is crystallizing, atoms like copper or 
cobalt it is actually copper c okay so copper copper or cobalt will usually replace the zinc atom in its molecular surface so what will it do this will either copper or cobalt to so replace the zinc atom in the molecular structure and then we will have this variable formula which is in bracket zn okay uh, we have to put comma because uh, these are uh, not uh, fixed chemical composition it's variable zn cu or co we put it twice because any one of them can come okay and then our usual thing as o for oh okay so this is the variable formula okay we have to put the main component in the first place okay that is why we have to I have put this zn in the first place and in the second place it is a component which can easily replace the first component so copper can easily replace the zinc atom in this mineral and lastly we have to put cobalt which is leastly i mean uh, it has very less chances of replacing okay. so this is the general methodology of writing a variable formula we also have other uh, exceptions we can talk this in the chemical properties of minerals okay so moving forward this uh, remove this so we understood that uh, minerals should have different chemical composition which can be expressed by a molecular form okay so moving forward we have that uh, mineral has a definite molecular structure so when we have a definite chemical composition it usually has a definite molecular structure because uh, there needs to be a proper arrangement of molecules which is uh, it should be repetitive okay when we don't have repetitive arrangement when we have a haphazard arrangement of molecules the compound will not be as strong the bonding will not be as strong as it should be so the minerals will not be stable okay so therefore we should have a definite molecular structure a repetitive arrangement okay and lastly we have that they are restricted to inorganic solids only okay explain this in my previous video why minerals are only inorganic solids okay mm, but uh, most of the minerals, I mean 99.99% of the minerals are inorganic. There's only two or three exceptions. Uh, for example, we have malite. Okay, I write this malite. Malite is an organic mineral. Okay, this is a aluminium carboxylate mineral. Okay, this is found in coal beds, but even though it is an organic compound, it is still considered a valid mineral species because of the conditions in which it is formed. Okay, so but uh, we should remember that minerals are only inorganic solids, not organic. Okay, so going forward, let us see some of the forms exhibited by minerals. So, minerals are commonly found in two distinct forms the first is crystalline or it can be amorphous so this is an example of a crystalline mineral which is nothing but quartz and this is amorphous limonite or graphite okay actually graphite is uh, crystalline but morphology i mean morphological features is very very similar to an amorphous mineral and okay, anyways uh, we also have one form which is called as crypto crystal this is P T O crypto crystalline this is a form which is 
in between crystalline and amorphous okay so crystal crystalline is crypto means fake or uh, duplicate and crystalline is crystal okay so it fakes the morphology of crystals but it is not crystalline in its molecular level okay we'll see what is crystalline amorphous and then we'll see what is crypto crystalline okay so talking about crystal minerals so crystal minerals are those they have a definite repetitive molecular arrangement a perfect molecular arrangement which is externally bounded by its crystalline form which consists of faces edges and solid angles okay they are just still sand hard so for example we have quartz pyrite galena so as you can see in this example they have a perfect molecular arrangement okay so so you can see here this is a perfect cubical arrangement which is exhibited by its external form okay so they have faces you can see this face okay edges and solid angles this is a solid angle now just mark it here so this is a solid angle okay this is a edge and this is a face okay so crystal minerals are externally composed of faces edges and solid angles so when we have all these components and when they are hard when they are shiny you can see the crystal is a shiny quartz crystal this is a shiny metallic pyrite crystal this is also a shiny metallic galena crystal so when we have these three components faces edges and solid angles and when they are shiny and hard we can say that they are crystalline minerals so more than 60% of the minerals are crystalline in nature okay so moving towards the amorphous minerals they lack a definite molecular arrangement and are earthy or dead in appearance they do not possess crystal forms external they do not have a face they do not have an edge they do not have a solid angle so for example we have limonite we have georgite so this is limonite okay this is limonite so you can see in limonite it is not having any perfect shape no definite geometry no face no solid angle no edge is also not hard you can just scratch your nail and it will just come in powder okay not having any luster or shine it's just dull and earthy okay so when you see these properties, you can say that this is an amorphous mineral. But sometimes, what happens? Many minerals. Uh, I mean, not many, some. Like for example, graphite. Okay. Graphite. Graphite is essentially a crystalline mineral because of the perfect arrangement of carbon atoms. Okay. But when we see graphite in its hand specimen, it appears dull. I mean, it's not dull actually, it is having a luster, but it appears earthy and it is not having a perfect geometrical shape. But still, it is considered a crystal mineral because it is having a perfect molecular arrangement. Okay. So, we should not get uh, confused about how to classify crystal minerals and amorphous minerals. Okay. So, let's see some hand specimens okay so i have taken uh, three minerals two are crystalline and two are amorphous so on my left is the amorphous mineral which you already seen it, this is a phosphatic module and on my right is our two crystal minerals amethyst and kyanite okay actually uh, this one this one is not a valid mineral species but still to explain how amorphous minerals are, I am using this as an example, but do not get confused. This is not a valid mineral species, it's just a sedimentary concretion of phosphate. Okay, P2O5 is just a concretion, this is accumulation, just accumulation of phosphate. Okay, it's not a valid mineral species. So Continuing towards, so let's see the phosphating module on my left. As you can see, it is very, very dull, earthy, without any shine or luster on it. 
okay it is not having any specific shape okay it's also powdery okay you can see the powder on my hands i'm just scratching this with my nail see it comes out easily crumbles very easily so also i am not having hardness it's not hard okay so this is how i'm approaching this uh, because uh, they lack the crystalline form the bonds are not very strong okay when the bonds are not very strong they can break easily so i just try to break this piece see breaks so easily they are very very soft one good example is a uh, chalk which we use daily in our classroom chalk is also an amorphous form so not a minerals uh, to be specific okay but it has all the properties of an amorphous mineral except for the crystalline form okay, and uh, i'll take this amethyst so amethyst as you can see it is having a perfect shape okay and uh, canning can it is having bladed sh shape i mean thin blades it has a luster it has a specific arrangement of atoms and it is hard you cannot scratch uh, or break kyanite or amethyst, amethyst very easily as we did with the uh, phosphatic mineral okay so this is the main difference between crystalline and amorphous mineral their structure which i have already explained in my earlier video so uh, going short and fast crystal minerals have a repeating pattern okay so we have a repeating pattern but we do not have a repeating pattern in amorphous minerals they are haphazard okay so this is the main difference between crystal and amorphous minerals such as and one thing we should know that note that Amorphous minerals do not possess physical and optical properties like the crystalline minerals. So we saw that phosphatic nodule in the last, uh, I mean, previously, it was not having any luster, it was not having any shape, it was not having any fracture cleavage, no chemical properties, no optical. I mean, chemical properties obviously there, uh, but no optical properties like it was not transparent or translucent, or it was not having any uh, refractive index, etc., etc. So what is the main reason behind this why do not why do amorphous minerals are not having these properties because of absence of crystal structures okay so how does that happen so to understand that understand that let's see what is a crystal structure in general okay. so a crystal structure is a regular repeating arrangement of atoms molecules or ions in a solid crystalline material okay. So we have seen that uh, the crystal structure of crystalline minerals, okay, is having a specific arrangement of atoms or molecules. Okay, when we have that kind of specific arrangement, we have get something called as symmetry of a crystalline solid. So in general, what is symmetry? So symmetry is nothing, but uh, um, suppose we take a object okay i'll take one object okay i have this object over here and i see this through a mirror okay this is mirror imagine this is a mirror i can get to see same objects reflection around the mirror so what is happening here so this object is having uh, something matching okay which is facing uh, each other or around an axis okay to be simple symmetry is i mean like uh, something is symmetrical okay when it is having an two matching halves okay uh, this is uh, how to explain it okay when i cut this circle this part is similar to this part so i can say that this circle is symmetrical uh, along this axis or line okay so this is a symmetry it have uh, when we talk when you're talking about crystals it happens in three dimensions what we saw here is two dimension symmetry when we talk about crystals it happens in all the three dimensions okay 
we'll deal this later on a specific dedicated video okay on symmetry of crystals okay so when we have symmetry okay we get the physical properties of minerals okay because symmetry is a very important thing that determines the physical properties of minerals okay it will determine the shape it will determine the structure it will determine the hardness of it because so symmetry uh, determines hardness symmetry determines the optical transparency etc etc so this is how a crystal structure indirectly determines all the physical properties of minerals not only minerals but all the chemical crystal crystalline compounds okay so we saw how crystal structure determines the physical and optical properties of crystalline solid now let's see some of the basic physical properties that are exhibited by the minerals in brief okay so they are color luster streak hardness then we have shape or form cleavage fracture specific gravity and others lot of physical properties are there we'll see them in detail in the next video okay so do we continued thank you for watching this video i hope that i have explained in the best possible way huh? and don't forget to like subscribe and share thank you very much see you later